Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the USS Akron or USS Macon LTA aircraft carrier. It's a 1520 scale kit from AMT and it's model kit number 892. It's a 2015 re-release and this model should be readily available at online outlets and in some of the larger hobby shops. The kit has markings for either the USS Akron ZRS-4 or the USS Macon ZRS-5. AMT designates this a skill level 2, but I think it's more of an intermediate builder's uh, uh, mecca here because there's some pretty small parts and it'll give you a workout with the tweezers. Well, the, uh, the decals in this kit are also kind of delicate. Some of them are, are a little on the larger size, but uh, they're difficult to make uh, follow the contours. So uh, this is not a kit for the beginner. Uh, it's a large but simple kit. It's molded in light gray styrene and has water slide decals. And it's a basic construction guide. Uh, it's large but simple uh, with only seven main pieces. And it's a great example of the excellent subject matter that used to be commonplace in the modeling industry. With some scratch building and imagination, you could make this into an actual aircraft carrier as it was designed with drop down aircraft uh, biplanes and maybe even the spy basket. Here is the kit's contents and some people might call this an open box review. They'd open the box, pull out the parts one by one, try to find some words to describe them, but that won't help you build the kit will it? So here's my open box review in 10 seconds. Now as we're going along uh, know that we're going to use mostly Model Masters liquid cement Sometimes super glue uh, for strength and uh, immediate tactile surface. And oftentimes we'll be using uh, some setting solution for those intricate decals. But uh, for the most part, you must remember please follow all the manufacturer's safety guidelines when using any of the products you see here in the review. As you can see, these are colorful water slide decals and the registry is quite good. You'll also find that you'll benefit greatly by using a large amount of warm water to let them come off uh, their backing and also for placing them on the model itself. But even so, I strongly recommend you use some of the aftermarket setting solutions to make sure that they follow all the contours and stick well to the model. First thing I did was use a little light soap detergent and warm water to scrub off any release agents that might still be on the plastic parts, especially the larger ones for the fuselage. The next thing I did was pull these parts out to assemble the display stand to use it as a cradle in order to build the model. Now, I just simply put it together for now and you'll notice that there are a couple of uh, ejector pin marks on this uh, on one side of each of the legs there so I just turn them to the inside but if it's a contest model you could finish those off nicely with some putty and some sandpaper. Right away you need to decide whether you want to make the Akron or the Macon. I decided to make the USS Macon version and so I, I had to drill out the holes here uh, that were flashed over or, or you could use a hobby knife just to ream those out to accept the four engine radiator intakes later on. I also elected to use the option of the two hanging hooks uh, that go into the fuselage halves and as you can see they're placed here uh, in the little uh, niches uh, and not into a post hole or anything like that. After you've rinsed and dried the parts thoroughly you can assemble the two fuselage halves and you'll find that they fit together very well. Uh, I use some clamps uh, as uh, on the stabilizers and some rubber bands to keep the unit uh, together but otherwise it went together flawlessly. Now grab these parts uh, the four parts to assemble the horizontal stabilizers so use some glue on the edges and then clamp those together until they're set. So remember when you're putting the model together to test fit all the parts uh, to make sure that they fit properly. In this case I found that the uh, glue tabs on the stabilizers were a little too deep uh, to permit full depth engagement on the body. 
so I took about 60 thousandths off from the base of them uh, before I installed them. Now we can start to work on the uh, fuselage and the seam that is uh, splits the thing in a horizontal fashion. Uh, so uh, it also uh, is uh, apparent on the uh, stabilizers. So at this time we can go ahead and use our favorite putty and then uh, go ahead and fill those in as long as well as some sink marks that you may find on the top side. Now we added the horizontal stabilizers to the slots in the body and then kind of eye them up to make sure they stay uh, all at about 90 degrees uh, so that they are in alignment. Now we can install the hangar door and the gondola to the main body on the bottom there and for the making you would add the uh, motor radiators. Now sand the seams down uh, everywhere you find those to eliminate the seams. When the uh, gondola is glued into place on the body it's not a bad fit but still there's a slight uh, seam there a gap uh, where it meets the body and even uh, on the gondola itself needs a little bit of primer putty uh, to uh, make sure that you get a good smooth finish there. We've already progressed to the point now uh, after we've sanded that all off and had the end hanger door uh, taped into position uh, that uh, we can paint the body. So uh, we're going to first use a good etching primer and spray it over all with a few light coats uh, and then uh, after the primer has dried uh, look for any imperfections that need to be touched up then go ahead and spray the unit with some flat aluminum paint. Um, I use the cradle to um, uh, set it on so I painted one half, uh, let that dry and then painted the other half uh, overlapping at the seams. Now uh, we're going to spray all of the other parts on the trees uh, that are left, uh, flat aluminum as well and the, uh, the highlight the roof vents with a little bit of what we call black wash uh, which is really just a um, uh, black paint that's been thinned down I painted the uh, propeller spinners black and the blade tips red also. When the body has dried thoroughly um, and it shouldn't take too long if you're using one of the modern silver paints they dry pretty quickly uh, but you're going to maybe want to use some latex gloves to handle this model because uh, silver uh, tends to pick up fingerprints so but when it has dried thoroughly you tape it off except for the area for the off-white stripe on the side and then spray the stripe uh, along the motor line there and then remove the tape and set it aside to dry for later. I went ahead and found some matching paint uh, to paint the uh, edges of the stabilizers red uh, to make sure that the uh, decals didn't leave any large gaps there uh, and expose the silver under uh, coat so I recommend that you do that just so that you get a good look to those stabilizers. Now we can go ahead and begin adding uh, our decals to the model and uh, as you can see the stabilizers have the red white and blue uh, stripes and I applied those uh, per the instructions and the uh, everything that's it's necessary because uh, the braces for the rudder assist are installed over the top of these so we're going to put these into place uh, with the red ends painted so that there's no uh, gap there and after the decals dry then we'll just poke a hole in them where the stabilizers go uh, to provide a gluing point for those braces. I found that it was best to cut the window panes out separately uh, from the carrier to ensure that they fit into the frames and then I added a small piece uh, of black tape to the front of the Macon's radiator openings uh, to make it uh, uh, appear more correct. And some of the decal setting solution here uh, really helps with the uh, decals to set into the windows, etc. Uh, please note that you're going to want to scrape the paint off the contact points to make sure that the glue sticks. Um, for these little uh, little guys here, I found it best to use some the old-fashioned tube glue because of its slow setting properties so that I could fix them into position uh, in the right place and make sure they were seated. Now um, the uh, first we'll add the stabilizer braces and these are marked left and right on the tree 
and that's how they fit into the mounting holes with the nose facing forward uh, and please note that these are small pieces so make sure you're working over an area that would enable you to find them if you drop them. Now here's the completed arrangement with the braces and the rudder assists installed and I found the pre-drilled mounting holes uh, more of a guide than actual contact points because they didn't always really fit into them uh, so these parts were glued over the top to conceal the holes. Here's some of the uh, window decals and the um, the decals are such that the, the slots in them actually correspond to window frames and you can see them right through there just like a real window. Now add the proper hood vents depending on the version of your choice to the top of the aircraft and do some test fitting there to make sure that they fit properly into each location. The props can be added to the motors and then installed on into the divots on the body and then add the back braces with some super glue and accelerant to keep them in place. Finally uh, I got out the components and finished off the display stand in gold and then placed some sticky back felt on the contact points uh, for where the model sets and there you have it a nice uh, an unusual model for the aviation buff to display on the stand or hanging from the sky hooks. Well that's all there is to it. As you can see this is an awesome looking model and if you pay a little attention to the seams to make sure that uh, those get smoothed out and properly finished off you'll have a really nice looking model uh, to display on your shelf but it will take up some space um, as it's a great kit to commemorate the small but important chapter in aviation history. Uh, this was not just a reconnaissance vehicle but an aircraft carrier. Uh, I believe it could uh, contain about four or five of the biplanes in there and they were actually launched via a hook that was lowered on, through the hatch at the bottom. So once again uh, if you can find one uh, buy it, put it together and put it on your shelf. I think you'll be happy with the results. We hope you've enjoyed this premium scale model review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and always at our website www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.